Hello and welcome to episode 35 of Diggs Sideline Podcast. As always, we are your hosts. I am Sam DeCosmo. And my name is Patrick Alonia. And this <coughs> will be the final episode of the Viking season. We'll still have some more episodes coming yeah, through. But I, let's I, we're we're going to sprinkle let's, in let's episodes put a, here Let's and put there, a moratorium but... on the season here. Yeah. Pat, how, do, how did we get here? <sighs> How did we get to our, our podcast? <laughs> yeah. No, how do no? Oh, how, oh. <laughs> how did the Vikings get to this point in time? Well, um, I think this is kind of what we predict. We predicted the season yeah. to kind of end in this fashion. Um, I think it's only fitting that we do end the season as pathetically as we did. <laughs> it's only fitting because I've been preaching it. The running the ball will only get you so far. Yeah, and when you run up and do a good defense in the playoffs, you can't realistically expect to run the ball. 30 times against that beautiful front four or seven and come out with a win. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I think if you told me going into the season that we'd go 10 and six, which is a two game improvement, very easily could have gone 11 and five had we played our starters in that last week. But if you told me 10 and six upset win uh, in the wild card round against the saints only to lose to the number one seed in the NFC, Coming off of last year, if you told me, hey, would you take this deal last year? I probably would have took that deal. I mean. Yeah, sure. What, what I want to get at, though, is th- this is kind of what we're expecting. Yeah. The, the, the bar is no longer 10 and 6. It's like 11 and 5 and plus. Yeah. And that's kind of the bar going into every season yeah. from here on out. Yeah. You know? No, I, I, and, I, but, you, you mean the, the, the bar that we're putting on the Vikings or the playoff bar? Just the Vikings in general. Just the Vikings yeah, in general. Okay. in general. Yeah. <laughs> Eleven to five is is asking quite a bit, and I I don't think it's an I don't think it's an unrealistic ask to be honest. I think eleven and five. I think you're right. That that's got to be the bar for the division we play in, for the conference right, we play in, right, exactly. for the talent that we have. I think you're absolutely right. And don't get me wrong. In the NFL, when you go eleven and five, you got to pat yourself on the back. Yeah, you're because I don't team. care if you're playing the Cleveland Browns, the Detroit Lions, or whoever it is. You still need to come out there and win these football right, games. Exactly. And we did win eleven. You know, out of well, those five, or I'm sorry, not five, ten. Ten. But ten sec- very, ten sec- very yeah, yeah. easily could have won a lot. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, but so, so yeah. What did you have any other? Let's 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 quick recap the Niners because it's been yeah. a little while. Sorry for the delay, everyone. We've been busy. Yeah, you know, we're sorry. doing our well, best here. I just needed to cry into my pillow a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so let so let's recap the so uh, end of the box score twenty uh, Niners twenty seven Vikings ten. And it seemed like for the majority of the game, the it was, so this was very reminiscent of the Packers game uh, late in the year where we couldn't get a run game going. Uh, we couldn't really get much of a pass game going. And our defense was just on the field for far too long. We were just, we, our, our offense couldn't stay on the field. So, and but, on that note quickly though, again, there was, there's no plan B for that. Yeah. For you're when right. the we run game stops, we didn't make any offensive got, adjustments got, and we can't because it's, I, I, so let me go over the stat line real quick. Uh, Kirk had a decent stat line. Granted, if you want, when you go back and watch the film, he didn't have a good game. Sam he, had the audacity before we hit record <laughs> to look me in the eyes and go, "Wow, oh. Kirk didn't have a bad stat line." And I, I don't know what I must have looked like. No, no, <laughs> dude. No, so, <laughs> dude. Let me go. Hold on. Let me go. Let me go over the stat line. Twenty-one for twenty-nine, hundred seventy-two yards, uh, one <clears> touchdown, <throat> one interception. Uh, he did take six sacks, and I put that squarely on Riley Reef. There were multiple times where Bosa just like ran around him, and he's just standing there, like, yeah, you know. But six sacks for four, for forty six yards. That's that's offensive line. Two, two quick things though. One thing is, can we both acknowledge that Kirk Cousins is not moving the pocket? He doesn't move in the pocket. No. Not not at all. So like, unless it's a design bootleg, in which case, unless it's designed, but we don't remember even counting that because it's designed. Right. He doesn't elude the pocket. He doesn't extend the play. He doesn't give the offensive line a little bit of help by moving in the pocket. So yeah. Yes and no. I'm putting it kind of a 50-50 on them. Granted, that's an an established, amazing run or defense that they sure. have. Right. The second thing I want to talk about. Did you watch that video that I sent with overlooking yeah. overlooking the field? On six plays that Sage Rosenthal, I had posted on the Dig Sideline page just because I wanted yeah. people to know before we talk into it here. There were five plays, Sam. Five plays. The pocket was clean AF. Clean as heck. And we had Diggs and Thielen on 20-yard-plus pitch and yeah. catches. But if he just pulled the trigger, we, we're, we're making ground. We're, we're, we're moving the ball. Yeah. And he, I don't, I, what, what is it, dude? I don't get it. I think when you get sacked six times, you start to get panicky. And I think that might be what it is. K- Pat, I want I want you to go stand out in a field somewhere, and I want <laughs> a 250-pound pure muscle beast guy to just come 
spear you in the back unexpectedly six times. Oh, wait, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. And then I want you <laughs> to be able to tell me that you're not going to be a little bit skittish about trying to to, to, to First make off, a play. First off, I would die. So <laughs> this isn't practical. That's why I didn't play football. I've always been a skinnier guy. Um, so that's not even practical. But the second thing, though, he's a professional quarterback. This is what, yeah, this is what I, we're paying him the money to do. I know, I know, I And this know. is why he'll never be great. He'll only be good. And we'll never win a Super Bowl with Kirk we'll, Cousins. We'll get into this. And maybe it's an off-season we'll never episode win a about, Super- about what does the future position of the, uh, the Minnesota Vikings quarterback If we like. re-sign Kirk Cousins to a five-year hey, deal, I will be – I'm not I, kidding – I will be ruined for the next five years. I have, I have, I have some different opinions on that, and I think that that would be a good off-season episode. So maybe we save okay. that for for later. But uh, so getting back to the stat line, uh, Kirk Cousins twenty-one for twenty-nine, uh, one touchdown, one interception, took six sacks. Uh, we only ran the ball ten times, Sam. That's because we couldn't run the ball. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm getting at is it felt like it was run, run, pass. But that yeah. Was, but that wasn't the game plan. We 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 threw the ball three times more than we didn't. Yeah, because you know in I mean? the fourth quarter with six minutes left, we're like, oh, crap. It's the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And we didn't we didn't really make it. <clears throat> and when we started throwing the ball, we didn't do those play, those those highly efficient plays where Kirk is rolling out. We I didn't see one boot like that whole that whole time. And I put that squarely on Kevin Stefanski. No, but but Sam, so here here's my rebuttal to that. The bootleg wouldn't even work because they're not even respecting the run game. There's nothing to respect. I'm not saying play action. I'm just not, I'm just saying like get Kirk out of the pocket, get 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 Kirk some real estate, you know? I don't know, man. The whole I thought the whole game plan was a complete and utter joke. Yeah. Yeah. It it was it was definitely difficult. Uh, but you got to remember these San Francisco 49ers they they were the number 1 seed in the NFC. They they obliterated the Green Bay Packers, which that game is coming up this weekend that'll be exciting to see. But I mean they're not they're not a scrub of a team and I mean we but say, I, but I don't say, think I don't think we it, we embarrassed our, our offense embarrassed ourselves. I don't think our defense necessarily embarrassed themselves. Special teams that They were that, out there the whole game. Yeah. There's but, nothing they could do. I, 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 this game would have been closer if Marcus Sherrills doesn't fumble in the red zone on that punt. You can't put that on. I mean, I think that was our last little bit of hope. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't even remember what the score I, was at that point. Yeah. I, I well. But I, yeah, it didn't help that Sherrills. That was just a classic way to kind of right. put the dagger the, there. Right. Exactly. I, I don't know. I, I, Speaking of which, wait, 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 wait. Speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> Sam owes me $20 actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just to refresh everyone's memory. Um, I, Sam and I had made a bet that Kevin Stefanski, I made a bet that he would leave for one of the open vacant coaching positions. Head coaching position. Sam said he was going to stick with us. He wouldn't take the Browns position. I was a, I, now, I, no, let me clarify my position. I didn't say that he'd stick through with text, us. Through text, I thought you said I, there's yeah, no, no way he would want that I, position. Well, no, it, well, I, I, I don't could know be wrong. I could be wrong. But, but anyway, my, my thought was that the, that the, the teams that were interviewing him were going to leverage his interview against the other interviewees and that they would look at his relationship with Gary yeah. Kubiak and think that he's not a, a viable candidate. Okay. Apparently the Browns thought otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, Sam owes me $10 there. And then uh, <laughs> after Cheryl's muffs the punt, and I think we ended up stopping them on their next position or whatever. Yeah. Sam and I made another bet. Sam was, was dumb. Sam was guaranteeing that Marcus Shows was going to be pulled. I was like, dude, there's five minutes left in the rest of our season. There's no way they're going to pull him. So I, I just had to I don't to think boast. it was that quite that late in the game. I think it might have still well, been like, the third There's like quarter. six minutes left. No, 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 no. no. fourth quarter? No, that's fourth quarter. Anyways, Sam owes me $20. <laughs> To be frank, I, to be I, frank, I, I don't even. About that. I don't I mean, even. Mike Hughes was out. I don't know. even care about the money. It just felt really good to. <laughs> I just wanted everyone to know. <laughs> Chad Baby wouldn't have fumbled that. I just. <laughs> where was Chad this whole oh, year? Man. Oh man. man. So so okay. So let so let's just let let's finish this up. So we had uh, we had roughly forty plays to their roughly seventy plays. Our offense just couldn't stay out on the field. They had almost twice as many plays as us, and our defense as admirably as they as they did. Um, you know, Eric Kendricks had that interception. Uh, you know, they, they played admirably, uh, but the Fort Niners are a good team. They, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo, he, he only had a complete, he completed 11 of his 19 passes and that's cause they ran the ball 47 times. Cause our, our run defense just Garoppolo was not that impressive. No, he, he was throwing a lot of ducks. He, yeah, he was, he was not that impressive at all. Um, their, their run game just. Yeah, that just embarrassed us. What what happened? I, I, you know, Zimmer came out afterwards and he was talking about the guys that are going to be free agents, and he essentially just said, you know, at the end of the day, 
I, I can't. It's a young man's game. I, I can't help but feel like. And yeah, I'm glad you bring that up because I wrote down a couple names that yeah might not be here next year. Yeah. Um, but I, I can't help but feel like we played a lot of man in that game. Yeah. And that was evident by I thought what what Shanahan did phenomenally was he he created what what little passing that um, Garoppolo did have. He he opened up the area for Garoppolo. Because he would yeah. pull, because you send send the running back on yep. a, on a boot, and Kendricks just follows because he has yep. to, right? Yeah. And that middle of the field is wide open, and Rhodes can't cover man to man as well. Interesting, because when you when you <clears throat> watch the Atlanta Falcons game, I, it was a zone that was yeah that was, that was winning the day because the receivers are so fast and yeah. they run so many trick plays. And I, and I almost wonder why, just kind of the nature of how that game went and how they were running their offensive plays because there was a lot of slants. Yeah. Quite a lot of quite a bit of slants. Well, because and they the have, they have, they have film of of slants burning the Vikings all year. Well, yeah, there you go. Rodgers twice a year, but yeah. Anyways, I don't know. I mean, they so Tevin Coleman was their was their lead back. He had twenty two carries, one hundred five yards. Uh, but again, his long was only eleven. Uh, Raheem Mostert, uh, he had twelve carries, long of ten for fifty-eight yards, um, and Breda had eight carries. So I mean, it wasn't that they were breaking off anything super incredible, but it was just they just kept wearing away at us. And I so I want to talk about what was failing in the run game. So we did a lot of the, what we did against the against the Saints, where we brought Daniil Hunter. And Everson Griffin on the inside. Now those are our pass rushers. Those are on the edge. They're not necessarily yeah. the run stuffers. That's supposed to be Linval Joseph. So right. I wonder if part of what was making it work was that their their speedy running backs were getting by yeah. our the, the middle of our line because they were running up the up the gut the entire time. But but I can't help but feel like no, we only put Hunter and Griffin in the middle on third third and shotgun. Sure. So okay. unless they're doing draws, but so, I don't think they did too many draws so, on third and so long. So is this is this indicative of Linval Joseph and Shamar Stephens play? I mean, it's hard to say. I, it's very hard. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. I honestly, I don't know. They just dominated us all around. They did. They just did. And, and I love Linval Joseph. He's been an incredible yeah. player for us. But I think he's got to be towards the top of the list of is this guy losing a step? Yeah. Well, you he, know, he's been in the league yeah, for a long time. Let's talk about that. So I think Joseph is 31 or 32 years yeah. old. Then we got Griffin, who I think is 31. That's a, that's a long time to just R- fight in the trenches. Rhodes is 29. Yeah. Riley Reef has just flat out got to go. You know, like there's a lot of decisions yeah. that need to be made. And there's a, and not just necessarily about play, but about cap space. I think oh, we're, current, yeah. we're currently oh, over yeah. the cap for next and year. So we're going to have to make some adjustments. I'm willing to do another $10 bet here that Dalvin Cook holds out this off season you for a so? contract. Well, with his injury history, he's going to want to lock something up this off season. Yeah, I don't think he goes another year without potentially tearing an ACL. Yeah. Lord knows what, you know. Well, and he showed his worth to us this. Oh, year. Oh, for, for sure. sure. I mean, without him, we're screwed. Yeah. Kirk Cousins is nobody. I think so. I think. Do you think Dalvin gets, Cook is our MVP? Do you think he gets Zeke Elliott money? I don't see why he wouldn't. I don't see why he wouldn't either. That's, that's just the way it's it's going, you know. Yeah, I, I could see Dalvin holding out. <clears throat> oh yeah, I could for sure. And I honestly, I respect him, and I think yeah. he, he, deserves he deserves the money, it. even though I know he's Absolutely. injury prone. He he deserves he deserves yeah. every bit of it. But so that does beg the question. I know he deserves it. Is that smart to do? And and I know and I I've got a hard on for Dalvin Cook because yeah. he's such a special player. But right. but couldn't, don't you agree? In today's NFL, the art running back position is so replaceable. Heck, yeah. look at Madison coming in and, and yeah. dominating the way he did. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and there's been ideas of flirt, flirting around. I don't think it ever happened, but is there a possibility that they trade Dalvin Cook for like a first round pick or something like that? Or do do, do the Vikings do something crazy like I don't, this? I don't think they do it anything crazy. That's not that's not how Rick that's not how Rick rolls. Rick roll. Rick roll. <laughs> Never gonna give. You up. <laughs> but no, I I don't see us trading him. I do see us giving him a contract. So, but that money's gonna have to come from somewhere. So. There, we'll, if we start cutting players, there's going to be a lot of dead cap space. But I, but we'd still save, we'd save like eight point eight million by cutting Riley Reef. Yeah, we'd save a bunch of money by cutting Xavier Rhodes. Now Xavier Rhodes, we'd have a lot of of dead cap space, but we'd yeah. still save like ten million dollars. Yep. You know, um, Kyle Rudolph, he did amazing things for us this year. But we have Irv Smith, and we just need mm-hmm. to make some business decisions. We need to free up some cap space. Right. We need to pay the guys that are going to be here for the next however many years. <clears throat> you know, right. I just it. It'll be interesting, to say the least. So, so, Sam, I just got to know, man. Has your opinion on Kirk Cousins changed, like, at all? Like, like, be, like, I just need you to be dead honest with me. Like, do you actually think... I not... Here, okay. Like, do you think he's Kirk a, Cousins a, a, is a not, top five quarterback? Kirk Cousins is definitely... He's not the golden god. But you can't just say, oh, I want uh, Drew Brees, or oh, I want an Aaron Rodgers, or oh, I want uh, this, that, and the other thing, because they don't become available. No, you I know, know that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You have to look at it through a realistic lens. And when we were when 
if you forget two years ago, all of our quarterbacks became unrestricted free agents and we had to do something. It was Teddy Bridgewater, Case Keenum and Sam Bradford. They all became free agents. Yeah. So it's like, all right, we're basically without a quarterback right now. So we can either bring one of those guys back yeah. and Teddy, he, I mean, as much as I love Teddy, he, you know, came back for a play and threw an interception right away. Case Keenum, there's an argument to be made. Sam Bradford was made out of glass. Yeah. So, like, if anything, you know, so, so, we, so we, not, I don't think we had the guy on the roster. And the only the only viable option that year was Kirk Cousins. No, no, no. So listen, listen to me. Back when we signed Kirk Cousins, I was popping champagne bottles. This yeah. is it. You know, yeah. I was all in on that. And uh, that whole year and even halfway into this year, I was all in on him. You know what I mean? We've ran the experiment. I fully believe that he just he won't he won't get us where we need to go. There's a limit to his there's a limit to his abilities to perform at an elite level. And I, I don't, I don't want, think he's top five. I think he's top eight. Uh, fine, mean, whatever. I don't even I mean? care like, what he's going to be but ranked. Like but the, like, the, but the top the top five guys never become available. I know. So 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 so, no, so let me let me quick say this. So I recognize. So even though I love Russell Wilson, he's my favorite non-Viking quarterback. I just, I've got the most respect for yeah. Russell Wilson, and I yeah. can't compare Russell Wilson to Kirk Cousins. You just can't do it. Apples or oranges, you know? But Russell Wilson's the kind of guy where you put him on a practice with a bunch of D practice squad players and you still have a fighting chance. Well, hang on. Hang on. What I'm alluding to in today's NFL with the Lamar Jacksons, the Deshaun Watsons, the Patrick Mahomes, or even frick me, even Josh Allen can get around the pocket. The, what I'm saying is the new era quarterbacks are much more elusive. They're dual threat. I would rather, last thing, I would rather suck balls for the next three years knowing we changed it up. We did something different. We went after a guy in the draft. Yes, maybe he sucked, but I can't do another. I don't want another 10 and 5, 11 and 6 or whatever, 11 and 4, whatever it is and just get knocked out of playoffs because because Mike Zimmer, again, I'll lead to one more thing. <laughs> Mike Zimmer already said he's not changing the offensive scheme. This is going to be a 30 run team and when we don't know what to do when the run is stopped, we're screwed. Game's over. There's so many issues with this team. <laughs> so to that point, I think one of those elusive quarterbacks would actually fit well in that scheme because as long as the clock is ticking, Zimmer's happy. You know, it's not necessarily about running yeah. the ball. It's about ticking the clock. So I, I see your point. Mm -hmm. We will never, ever, ever finish low enough to get one of those top quality hot college guys. We're just not, we're just not going to be able to do it. You know what I mean? And tanking is... <laughs> No, we can't take. We've got too much talent on the roster to tank. We've got too much talent. Eight so like, and eight is basically the the bottom, the lowest as we right, go. Exactly. So, I mean, I if we if we do that, we're, Rick is going to have to do some fancy footwork to make some. And it's and it's happened before. We traded Phil uh, a first round pick to Philadelphia for Sam Bradford. Right. You know, exactly. It's it's, it's it's happened before. I'm not saying it's not going to happen again, but I just th those guys will never become available. Ever. So and I, and I I recognize that you know it's I can't make that comparison, but. If there's just one thing I wish Kirk Cousins could do, is just get out of the pocket. Do, do you, you you recognize what yeah. what extending the play does? I, yes, I I I totally I I understand. I'm just saying you can't just look at it through the lens of I I want a new shiny object. You have to look at the reality of the situation and the the field of available players. You can't just say, oh, I want Russell Wilson. I know it's never so, going to happen. So I guess the, what I'm arguing though is we cannot re-sign this guy. We can't. What's the alternative? Well, we're going to find out in a year when his okay. contract is up sure. and players okay. are available. We'll, we'll figure that out then. But here's what I want to highlight. The counter argument to this is Kirk Cousins has had six offensive coordinators in six years. Or he will in this new, in this new season. Kevin Stefanski got hired away. By the way, I just want to sidebar and say I'm I'm happy for Kevin Stefanski. Yeah. He put in a Starting lot of hard gig. work. Climbed yeah. the ladder. 14 years with the 14 Vikings. 14 years with the Vikings. Happy for him. Yeah. But... And I, another sidebar: John D. Filippo just got demoted in Philadelphia or in uh, in Jacksonville. He's no longer the he got offensive. Fired. He got fired, but then he got rehired. Oh, he as, did get rehired as like the the quarterbacks oh, coach or something okay. like that, which is I think a step below passing game coordinator. Which yeah, because their their off their quarterbacks coach got promoted to passing game coordinator and the yeah. passing game coordinator. But go back but to anyway, your six so coordinators. We've had so Kirk Cousins has had six different coordinators. So I I'm hesitant to see. You know, I, I'm hesitant to put it all on him. You no, so I'm not putting it all on him. I know. I just think he... he but it sounds like you are. No, but he, he just literally lacks like that one fundamental thing that you need as a freaking quarterback. Do, do, you, don't, you don't see that? No, no, I see it. I see it. You need to be able to improvise. I get it. But 
He doesn't have it. He will get you to eleven and five much, with much, a perfect but, run game. But 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 I want to I want to know how much improvisation is worked into the game plan because you look at the routes that Diggs and Thielen run. They're not that when they see Kirk's in trouble, they don't necessarily break off the route to go help him out. They're running well, they, the route. No, they can't. The they can't that, look back. And they're running the route that's time. But you look at Devontae Adams; he does that all the time. That's after Rodgers is already running off to the side of the field and extending sure. the play. That's see, what I that see, is. Okay. That's what that is. Yeah. Okay. So he runs his route because he notices Rodgers is running away. So then he runs to him. You know. Sure. It's it's pitch and catch football. This yeah. is backyard football no, for these I, guys. No, I I I totally understand. I just. I'm I'm hesitant to put it all on him. I I think scheme and offensive coordinator has both. Sure, I mean now it's a, now Zimmer saying that he's going to keep a similar scheme that actually brings hope to me because I I think that we we just need some consistency. Which by the way, we haven't had a quarterback start for us for two seasons since freaking Dante Culpepper. Since Dante Culpepper, not even Brett Favre started two seasons for us. Yeah. You know, like this, we need stability at this position. You'll never get anywhere by having a quarterback here. So you need stability and that there's something to be said about that. But now I'm going to counter argue again. We're going to do this all night. Okay. (laughs) We have, would you argue that we are practically at the prime of our team? We've got so many pieces. We have a ridiculous amount of talent. I, I would need to look at every roster, but if you look at us top to bottom from a star player perspective, we are up there in terms of pure paper star talent. But here's the thing. Yes. I, I completely agree with you, but look at, look at the San Francisco 49ers. How much talent do they have? They don't have a, they don't have the big marquee wide receiver. They don't have the big marquee running back. I mean, they've got Emmanuel they Sanders have, and they, uh, yeah, what's his face? Who's super old and a guy who's super young and fast, but he still has a lot to learn. Debo. Yeah, Debo. But what they do have, they have a solid offensive line and a solid defensive line. Yeah. You know, and, right. and they're the number one seed and they're going to the NFC Championship, probably going to the Super Bowl. So that brings us to our next point. Our do offense need- is Rick Spielman has never properly... Address the, address offensive, the line. offensive line. And I wonder how much of that is Zimmer saying, I want a corner. How right. Much, you know and I'm already know? seeing that, you know, it was projected early, two, two early projections well, taking cornerbacks well, we already. we picked Bradbury in the first round this year. Yeah. And, I, you know, and he's not the greatest run blocker either. Or pass blocker, excuse me. No. <sighs> It'll be interesting to see how this I just want an, I just want, all I want is an elusive quarterback. I, even Teddy got out of the pocket. Even Teddy made it happen. Yeah, Case but, Keenum, but here's the, God, he got out of the pocket. He, I remember him ducking under guys and making plays happen. And yeah, but you look at Case Keenum. Has he been successful anywhere other than the Vikings? No, I have trashed him. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's it's see, and for for him it was all about scheme and it was all about you know the people he was playing with. You know he's not necessarily the guy either. It's it's. Confusing. I know he's not. No, I know he's not. I know he's not. Pat, it, we should be hired as co-assistant GMs. <laughs> <laughs> Call up Rick quick. Hey Rick, we got an idea. We here. got an idea. <laughs> no, I uh, I don't know. I think I think it's the non-sexy positions that win you these football games. You know, it's the it it's the left tackles. All I want know? is Kirk Cousins to not be afraid to throw the ball. All I want is. A good left tackle. That's all I want. That's all I want. Riley Reef, it was embarrassing. Like Nick Bosa would just, like Nick Bosa would either beat him or just run around him and he yeah. and he'd be just standing there. Yeah. You know, like a two year old. Okay, his, well I'm, I'm gonna out. do you. Sam, you know? I want you to, to line up on the left guard position <laughs> and have a two hundred and twenty pound jacked young fresh athlete come at you. <laughs> Yeah, but okay, give no, me I'm give joking, me that, joking, but also I'm give joking. me Riley Reese ability or his physical attributes too, and maybe I can do a better. I don't think I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Riley Reese. Wait, wait, wait so I want bad. you to finish that thought. Yeah, I, maybe I. If could I do have that. Riley Reese strength and physical stature, <laughs> you would. Yeah, do- I could do better against. Things. I won't be standing there like a two year old, my tummy puffed up, looking at n- looking at Kirk Cousins uh, who just got sacked. Oh gosh, like, it's embarrassing. It's dumb. Yeah. No, I know he's Matt Khalil two point oh. Oh yeah. I just don't get it. I know. I just don't get it. But yeah, so I think the well, I think the season is going to be. You know, we don't see a lot of change in our in our off seasons with personnel, starting personnel. Um, but I think that this is going to be a year. So two notable moves, see- though. George Edward Edwards is gone. Yeah. Um. And co- um. DB's coach has gone to uh, Jerry something. Okay. Yep. And then Stefanski is gone. So we yeah. do have some changes. So now now the big so, question is. So I want to clear up something about George Edwards though. So when it first came out, it, it sounded like he was being fired. And he wasn't being fired. It was the end of his contract, and they just decided not to re-sign uh, him. And okay. what people are saying is that uh, Zimmer wants to hire his son, who's Roll, been the right, linebacker right, coach, right, to be right, the new right. defensive coordinator. And you know what? I mean, the linebackers have done very well. Yeah. You know, maybe he maybe 
I mean, maybe he should get the, get the spot, but yeah. I don't think George Edwards did a bad job. Also, George Edwards is going to go somewhere where he's going to be able to call plays. He was never going to get a head coaching job yeah. working under Mike Zimmer because everyone yeah. knows Zimmer calls. It. So maybe it's just the best move for everyone. Yeah, you know, because yeah. not fine. George and and I don't know how well George is without Zimmer, but it you know he's learned from Zimmer. Right. You know, he'll be able to implement that scheme. He'll be able to call the plays, and mm-hmm. maybe he'll be able to get ahead. I think it's just best for everyone. Yeah. Stefanski got a head coaching job. Yeah. They're talking about uh, getting Clint Kubiak in to be the his mm-hmm. uh, to be the offensive coordinator. So it'll be the Zimmers and the Kubiak. So it worries me again, man. This is the '90s. Yeah, we're keeping with the '90s where it was ground and pound. There's, there's no. Can we talk about the Chiefs against Houston for a second? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I left for work. It was twenty-four to zero for Houston. Yeah. I'm like, wow. We live in a messed up world right. where this is right. What's happening right now? I go to work. I get my report. I pop on the game quick. It's 28-24 at the end of the half. Yeah. The Vikings don't score that many points in like a game. In yeah, a game. No, you're right. That was done all within like one quarter that they got all those points in. And they end the game with 51 points. Not only do you have, though, here, here's the thing. And I agree. that That's fun. That's sexy. That's the fantasy football offense that all basic fans want. Yeah, that's right. I called you basic. But here's the thing: you got to look You're at basic. their the identity of their team is the offense. So you have the reigning MVP in Patrick Mahomes, and you have an offensive savant, the the greatest offensive play designer who's ever lived in Andy Reid. So you have you put those two pieces together, yeah, your offense is going to be spectacular. But you 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 basically you, you do you want the Zimmer defense or do you want the Reid offense? Same. I, I would argue that this year the defense was not our shining not I, our shining spot. Uh, yeah, minus I, the last uh, Chargers and forward, they kind of turned it up. Yeah, defense no, was not our shining spot. It was I our agree. offense. This was an offensive focused year. Sure, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, what I'm getting at though, this is I'm just getting at. There's no nothing is new. There's nothing exciting. There's nothing fun. It's like we're stuck in the '90s. We're stuck in the '90s. Do you do you disagree? I don't disagree. I mean. There's a Full House show streaming on Netflix right now. Maybe we are stuck in the 90s. We're doing an I formation run down 20 points in the third quarter. We're still in I formation. I mean, I could call. I think I could call a better play with my Madden knowledge. Yeah. I, 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 I do <laughs> wonder how much of that is Zimmer dipping his toes into the <sighs> office. But I thought that was the whole point of hiring Kubiak was so that Zimmer, because his title is assistant head coach. You know, I, I wonder how much of that. Is, is Zimmer implementing his will on the offense, which he, yeah. sh- he shouldn't be doing. Yeah. He's a fantastic de- – he's fantastically defensive-minded. I think he can manage a game very well. He has no business dealing with the offense. Yeah. It'll be an interesting offseason, that's for sure. Yeah. Overall, it, it was a good year if you compare from the prior year, but it was just disappointing that time and time again against teams where – we knew it was going to be a tough matchup. We just didn't have – we didn't have a plan B. Yeah. There was no second option. Yeah. And I think the defense is able to make those adjustments, but you're right, the offense was not able to. Yeah, and that's, and that's it, it was fitting that that's how the game ended. Yeah. Or the season ended. Yeah, I mean, I don't – it was embarrassing how they were running against us, but I don't think that necessarily the rest of the game was embarrassing. 27-10 to 10 in the divisional round against the number one seed. Again, I don't put much of that on the defense. No. They were on the field yeah. the whole freaking game. Yeah, exactly. It was just so like the Packers So I, I thought yeah. it was – yeah, it was the Packer game and the Bears game in week three. You know, same so, thing. I mean, maybe it's a good thing that Stefanski is moving on, uh, but whoever comes in needs, I, I have needs a feel- to be able to tell them or maybe Kubiak just needs well, to tell that's Zimmer, what I, just like, hey. No, I'm saying Kubiak is part of the problem. I'm oh, saying so? I'm saying they're both born in the early 1900s. <laughs> Zimmer picked him because they both think alike. Yeah. They both come from the same era. And aside from the fact that Kubiak had Peyton Manning for the last little bit of his career there where Peyton Manning was the one calling all the shots at the line. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I, that was that so that was a really fun thing to watch about Peyton Manning was he not only was the quarterback but he was the offensive coordinator. Yeah. Like they'd call a play yeah. and he would and he'd go read the defense and yeah. he would audible every single time. He was the he would and that's an interesting model that I wonder if we can get to with, you know, when you see those quarterbacks that have been in the league as long as Peyton Manning, yeah. where you have almost a hybrid uh, uh, offensive coordinator quarterback. That would be very... But dude, but how, how many... I mean, honestly, can you name another quarterback who did what he did? No. We will never see that again. No, we'll never see that again, which is He very, is a freak. He was doing was, that in high school, I'm sure. And it was... And it was... Maybe it was, Andrew it was Luck more, was the closest was, thing I can think it was, of. It was more of a testament to his football IQ. Yeah. Rather right. than any ability, yeah, which is 
Well, to be it was, able to, it was beautiful to, watch. to read a defense like that it with him and Marvin Harrison. Oh my god, it was beautiful to watch. Yeah. Dallas so, Clark. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, I don't know. It'll be an interesting offseason for sure with play, personnel moves. Uh, you know, coaching staff moves. Uh, back office moves. It, it, it'll be interesting, and uh, Dig Sideline Podcast will be there to cover it. Yeah. So, so uh, what I do want to quick say, uh, two things. We will probably just keep sprinkling in shows. Yeah. I, why not? This yeah. I just is too much fun. Whether yeah, people we'll are listening or not, I don't care. We'll you know? keep you on your toes. Yeah. So I think we should do a Super yeah. Bowl one, for example, yeah. just for fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are going to. My parents don't listen to this, but thank you so much for letting us use uh, this upstairs bedroom, yes. <laughs> living room area. Yes. And the second thing, Sam, I have had so much freaking fun. I have had a ton of fun, Pat. I'm really glad that it, what was once a joke early in the summer <laughs> turned into what we're doing I right know. now. I know. I know. <laughs> I love it. And it's it's made the, the whole season more enriching for it me. It has. Uh, I've, I've, enjoyed, uh, yeah. I've enjoyed working, working with you. Really. <laughs> I've enjoyed working with you. And it's just... It, it's fun. Yeah. I'm having a blast doing it. And like I said, I don't care if anyone listens. It's yeah, right. Exactly. And, and in case anyone thinks that there's any like hate between Sam and I for any no. reason, there's none. No. None exists. No. It's just fun. And once Kirk Cousins leaves our life, <laughs> we're going to blossom. <laughs> so in like seven years from now. <laughs> With that, join us, join us on the next episode of Dig Sideline Podcast, whenever that may be. We'll be covering the Super Bowl for sure. And uh, until next season, Skull Vikings.